Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Reeti and I am back with another lecture in the DBMS series. So in the last lecture, we learnt about functional dependencies. In this particular video, we would be learning about attribute closure or closure set which is also helpful in finding candidate as well as super keys of a given relation or table. So without any further ado, let's get started. Now what is this attribute closure or closure set? As the name suggests that it will give me a set of attribute. But what is it exactly? So let's see. Attribute closure help us for identifying candidate keys, checking for functional dependencies and in normalization. So whenever we need any kind of help in finding the candidate keys which is present in our relation or the super keys and whenever we need any help in checking the functional dependencies present in our table, we use the attribute closure. So whenever there is an attribute x, it can be an attribute or you can also call it as a set of attribute. So whenever there is an attribute or a set of attribute, the closure set of this particular attribute is denoted by the plus sign and it gives me the set of all the attributes which can be determined by this particular attribute x. So closure of any attribute is denoted by plus sign and it gives me all the attributes which are present in the relation which can be determined by x. So here x is an attribute or set of attribute which gives me all the attributes in a relation which can be determined by x. So consider that there is a relation in which there is a functional dependency x determine a and there is one more functional dependency x determine b. So since x is determining a and x is determining b, if I find the closure of x according to the definition, it should give me all the attributes which can be determined by x. So that would be a and b. So A and B would be the closure set of X. So X closure gives me all the attributes which is present in the relation which can be determined by X. So let's see a practice question on how we can determine the attribute closure or closure set on some of the attributes which is present in a relation. So consider we have a relation R with attributes such as A, B, C, D and E. And there are some functional dependencies which are given as such A determines B, B determines C, C determines D and D determines E. Now this A determines B says that that if we know the value of A, we can find the value of B or B is functionally dependent on A. So these all things are being taught in the functional dependency video. So if you're not understanding this, you can go ahead and watch that video first and then come to this video. Now, how we can find the closure set of some of the attributes which is present in this table? So let's see. So the very first step is now according to the rule of reflexivity, all the attributes can determine their self. So according to the rule of reflexivity, it says if y is a subset of x, then x can determine y. So since y is a subset of x, y would always be have all the elements which is present in x. So we can also say that x can determine x. We can replace y with x because y would be having all the elements which is present in x. So we'll just use the rule of reflexivity and derive some of the functional dependencies that is a will determine a, b will determine b, c will determine c, d will determine d and e will determine e. So all the attributes can determine themselves according to the rule of reflexivity. Now the second step is, now according to the rule of transitivity, if A determines B and B determines C, then we can say that A can also determine C as B is common between them. So whenever A determines B and then B is an attribute which determines any other attributes, then A can also determine C. So since in the question we have some of the functional dependencies present, so let's use this functional dependency and let's use the rule of transitivity to derive some more functional dependency which will be helpful for us to find the closure. So let's see for A. So here it is given A determines B and then B determines C. So since B is common between them, can we say with the rule of transitivity that A will determine C? Yes, we can say. So the first functional dependency which we derive is A determine C. Now B is determining C and C is determining D. Now C is again common between them. So we can say B will determine D. So B will determine D is the second dependency. Now C determines D and D determines E. Again D is common between them. So we can say that C will determine E. So C will determine E is the third dependency which we got. Now since we have got three new functional dependency and these are also existing. So let's see if there are more dependencies which can come. So since here we can see that A determines C and here is there any C present? Yeah, C determines D. 
So we can say A determine C and C determine D. Since C is common between them, then A will determine D. So A determine D is another dependency. Now since A determines D, let's see that if there is any functional dependency with D. Yes. So D determines E. So we can say that A determines D, D determines E. So A will determine E. So A determine E is also a functional dependency. Now here E is present. So is E determining any of the dependency? No. So these will be all the dependencies of A. Now coming to B. So B determine D. Is there any D determining any of the attribute? Yes. So D determines E. So we can say since D is common between them, B determines E. Now coming to E. Is there any E which is determining anything? No. So these will be the dependencies of B. Now coming to C. So C determines E and since E doesn't determine any of the attributes, so this will be the only functional dependency for C. Now coming to the third step. Now according to the rule of union, if the determinant is same, we can combine the dependent. So according to the rule of union, if X determines A and X determines B, we can combine the dependent since the determinant is same. So we can say X will determine AB. So since we have all the functional dependencies with us using the rule of reflexivity and transitivity, let's see that how we can find the union. So for A, since A determine B, A determine C, A determine D and A determine E using transitivity rule and A determine A using reflexivity rule. So A will determine all A, B, C, D, E. In the same way we find for B, C, D and E. So B will determine C, D, E, B, C will determine D, E, C. D will determine E D and E will determine only E. So here the position doesn't matter. We can also write it as B A C E D. Like in any manner we can write. It's just that all the dependent should be present. So the step four is we have to find the closure set of attribute. So what it says is whenever we are finding closure of any of the attribute or the set of attribute, it contains all the attributes or all the set of attributes which can be determined by the attribute for which we are finding the closure. So here A closure will contain all the attributes which can be determined by A. So since here we have find all the functional dependencies and here we have find all the attributes which can be determined by A. So here you can say A can determine A, B, C, D and E. So A closure will have A, B, C, D and E as mentioned here. So A closure will be having A, B, C, D, E in the same way B closure will be having this C closure, D closure, E closure. So here you can see that we are finding the closure of set of attribute. So whenever we need to find the closure of set of attribute, what we do is firstly we write all the attributes which can be determined by A. So that is A, B, C, D and E. And then we write all the attributes which can be determined by B. That is B, C, D, E. But that is already present in the set. So we don't need to duplicate or repeat it. So this is the attribute closure of AB+. It will be having all the attributes which is present in the relation. So it will give me all the attributes which can be determined by A. Then all the attributes which can be determined by B. So combined it gives me A, B, C, D, E and E. So this was all about this video. I hope you like this video. So if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you're someone who is new to my channel, can go ahead and watch out the tech content first. And if you find it useful, can go ahead and subscribe. Also, if you have not followed me on my social media handles, you can go ahead and follow. The links are in the description. Till then, take care. Keep learning. Keep growing. Keep smiling. Bye all.